Hi guys, welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. I'm Ernest. Today we are going to look at uh, one of the concepts of uh, gas laws, and that is the concept of uh, combined gas laws. Now, the concept of combined gas laws comes from the, a combination of both the Boyce and Jass law that we have already discussed in our previous videos on the concepts of gas laws. Now, we're going to appreciate the relevance of uh, this combined gas law, which basically, as I've said, is a combination of uh, Jass and Boyce law. In a sense that it's uh, applied or maybe basically finds application in our day-to-day -day lives, especially in uh, the car tires that we use in our homes, and also in the working principles of our thought, air balloons, and for conditioning and the refrigeration system. So in this case, it's good for us to understand in order for us to know the working principles behind this, some of these, uh, of course, applications that I've mentioned. So without further ado, thank you and welcome. So as I've said today, it's going to be a discussion about the topic of our combined gas laws. So basically it's a topic of combined gas law. And as I've said, we are going to look at the, the concept of our combined gas laws for Boyle's law and Charles law, which we have already discussed in our previous videos. So for today, we are going to, to see how we can be able to uh, maybe mathematically represent this aspect of our combined gas law by still trying to remind ourselves of the expressions that we had uh, used for the concept of Jass and Boyce law. Now for Boyce law, we had said that uh, from the experimental data, it was confirmed that uh, volume is direct, I mean, inversely proportional to the pressure of a gas. And uh, then for Jass law, it states that uh, the volume is directly proportional to temperature. So a combination of these two laws that we have already mentioned in our previous video gives us the concept of combined gas law. Therefore, from the two expressions, we can have a comparison for volume which is being compared in the two aspects. Therefore, we can say that volume is directly proportional to temperature, but inversely proportional to pressure. Or rather, we can write the volume is directly proportional to temperature, but inversely proportional to pressure. Just expanded it for the sake of uh, just explanation. Therefore, this gives us a combined equation for T over P. Therefore, in this case, if we try to relate to this equation, we can have an equation that is, in a sense, written as PV over T gives us a constant. So in this case, uh, we are going to see that uh, we can compare maybe volumes of dif different gases uh, or maybe different uh, uh, pressures of gases using this aspect of a combined gas law. Now, suppose we have an hypothetical example for this uh, particular kind of an expression whereby we have a fixed mass of a gas that is having a volume V1. So let's say... Suppose a gas has a volume. So this is a volume of a fixed, a particular fixed, uh, fixed uh, mass of a gas has a volume V1 uh, at temperature T1 and pressure V1. Therefore, we can be able to write the expression to represent this aspect of uh, these three uh, particular variables using this expression for combined gas law by writing V1, V1 over T1 is equals a constant. Now, therefore, if we vary the volume of uh, this same same mass of a gas, whereby uh, at temperature, to the gas as a volume V2 and pressure P2. Therefore, still we can be able to write the expression that will be used in this second instance. This is the first one. So this one, two. So for condition two, we are going to write a volume where I mean the expression for this, which is a P1 V, I mean P2 V2 over T2 gives us a constant. 
So th therefore, from uh, the similar <coughs> analogy that we had used for the both the Charles and uh, Boyce law, we can state that P1, V1, P2, V2 gives us a constant. Therefore, we can do a comparison between the two instances for this particular mass of a gas by writing a combined expression, which will be written as P1, V1 over T1 gives us a constant, which is equivalent to P2, V2 over T2. Therefore, this expression gives us what we call a combined gas law for those two states or the status of uh, that particular gas. Now, this particular equation enables us to, uh, to obtain the volume of a gas under the conditions of temperature and pressure, provided that maybe some conditions like temperature and pressure are known. So maybe we are going to consider <coughs> this application of this particular expression that we are going to refer later to as an ideal gas equation uh, using an example, whereby we are going to see whether this particular argument for the expression or the, that equation that we have given on the board holds. So for that case, I'm going to use a particular example. By reading it, we extract the information and then from there we will try to figure out how to find the answer for that. So in this case, I'm going to read this particular question. Now it states that a given mass of a gas occupies 20 centimeter cubed at 25 degrees centigrade and 670 millimeters of mercury pressure, that's a pressure, we are required to find the volume <coughs> it will occupy at 10 degrees centigrade and 335 millimeters of mercury. So from this particular question, we are going to, we are seeing that there are two talked about whereby first we are provided with pressure and temperature and then we are provided with temperature I mean uh, temperature for a second instance and pressure now we are required to find volume so I'm going to extract this information by repeating the question so it states a given mass of a gas occupies 20 centimeter cube so that one refers to the V1 which is 20 centimeter cube at 25 degrees centigrade. So temperature one is 25 degrees centigrade and 670 millimeters of mercury, which is our pressure, 670 millimeters of mercury. So therefore we are required to find its volume at 10 degrees centigrade or Celsius so basically, the, this is 10 degrees Celsius is temperature 2 and the 335 millimeters of mercury. So the pressure, which is P2, is 335 millimeters of mercury. So we have already given a combined <coughs> uh, gas uh, law for application for this particular kind of a problem. So that we're going to have P1, V1 over T1 will be equivalent to P2. V2 over T2. <clears throat> so doing a substitution for this, this basically we are required to find uh, V2 and therefore from this we can just do a simplification by finding V2 by making it a subject of the formula. So therefore we are going to have P1, V1, T2 over, this one is uh, T1, P2. So this is going to give us the volume uh, it will occupy at 10 degrees centigrade and uh, 335 millimeters of mercury. And we said from the concept of gas law, we use the absolute temperature. So for this case, we're going to have to convert this one into kelvins by adding 273. So this therefore will be 800, and, I mean 283 kelvins and T1 will be 273 plus 25, which is 298 kelvins. So this absolute temperature for T1 and T2 are the one that we are going to do a substitution for in our formula. So this is going to give us a P1, which is 670 millimeters. I'm not going to write these measures for the sake of our space. So therefore, this is a V2, I mean V1, 
which is a 20 centimeter cube times uh, T2. T2, we are having 283 kelvins divided by T1, 298 kelvins times P2, 335 millimeters of mercury. So this volume basically says we have uh, V1 as 20 centimeter cube is going to be in terms of a centimeter cube. So we have also to begin on that, trying to see which dimension have been applied, or maybe units have been applied to each and uh, every aspect of these measurements that we have been given. So this basically is going to be 37 point. So basically I'm going to have it as 38 centimeter cube, but we can be able to do a verification from the calculation of that part of the substitution that we've written on the board so that we can confirm for that. So in this case, uh, this is how the combined uh, gas law can be able to be applied in one of the instances or the problems that we may have during our application. So in this case, I've said that it's good for us to try and appreciate each and every aspect of the concept that we are talking uh, in both sciences and mathematics. And for today, of course, as we have said, the gas law is very relevant in application of uh, working of the car tires and other areas like air conditioning and they may be the refrigeration system that we use in our homes. So this basically is a practical example whereby somebody can apply the combined gas law to find the volume pressure or the temperature that is required. So in this case, the, that is it for today. Thank you guys for uh, subs I mean, subscribing to our channel and also for those ones who are following us on social media. I request us to continue engaging us so that we can form a large community of our uh, maybe members who are going to discuss these particular concepts and try to simplify them for the sake of uh, maybe improving our skills in all the subjects that we are of course discussing and other areas of application. So that is it for today guys. Thank you. Bye. God bless you.